Okay, this is about the third or fourth time I've put an inverter on a pickup truck. I've put them on Chevys and Fords and and S10s. And uh, whenever I had a a shell, I would put them in the back by the back tailgate so I could reach in and unplug and turn things on from the back. I uh, found it pretty handy. I also wanted to be able to hook up my winch to it. So I've got some Anderson plugs in these bags here. I did order uh, a 250 amp breaker. The 100 amp I don't believe will be enough, but I uh, already want to be in tomorrow. So I was just kind of mocking it up. Um, I did take some of this five foot long um, one inch uh, stuff and went around the wire to give it the abrasion resistance. And I don't like sealing it up because I was foam in for 42 years and know what water does when it sits on stuff. And uh, this is number two gauge fine, like a welding wire. Um, I got that off the internet. It was $117 for 25 feet. And then this for a five foot section was like $299 at Menards. And I've used this before and it lasted fine. As long as it's not sitting out in the direct sunlight, it'll work fine. And um, anyway, so that's kind of what I've got going on. I'm putting in a, a Harbor Freight inverter. I've used these before. The last one lasted me six, eight years, um, and, and it's still it's still working. Now, my son's got it in the truck that he, he bought from me, and it's still working. Um, it works fine uh, through the years. Uh, when they first came out with these, the, the, uh, the pure sine waves were better, and they still say that they're better, but I've never had any trouble with this model running about anything. I think I had some trouble with it running an LED light and uh, a way of fixing it, I just plug in that lamp and, and next to it and then it would kick on because it saw the lamp so anyway there's some tricks that stuff with that I've got tie wraps some vinyl tape this was taped about every foot all the way along through there and uh, two individual wires I believe in running the negative all the way back to the battery just to keep any open high open grounds from being a problem um, in communications, I've learned a lot about faults and wiring, so giving it the best chance of going. So we're going to go over here to the truck. It's an F-250. I just bought, have had this a little under three, three, four weeks maybe, and just got the topper on it last week or maybe two weeks ago. And um, so I'm going to wire up the inverter and get that run, get that get go, that going. So, um, the reason I have this is for basically pulling RV, the F-150, with just a little bit light. The 18-wheelers will blow us around a little bit, and uh, this truck handles that a little bit better. So, I'm going to open this thing up and unload stuff out of the back of it and get it ready to roll. All right, if you look down in that hole, I go straight down to the under there part right down in here and uh, that's where I'm going to bring my wire up there's plenty of room to come up through here I'm putting me a little grommet hole right here for these two lines to come in and I'm going to enlarge that I started off with a about an eighth inch bit I'm, I'll graduate up a little bit then I'll probably get uh, one of the Harbor Freight uh, bits out and ream it out well after you're when you're working on steel and stuff you have a bit that's not quite cutting and you know it should be it's time to pull it out to the drill doctor do that I just brought this set from uh, Grizzly and uh, my son and I were using it and that thing wasn't hard to cut through nothing so um, get the drill doctor out clean up them edges get them sharp again and they go right through the stuff so uh, probably one of the best investments is a drill doctor this is a 500 series I've got a 250 there um, I thought I had uh, messed it up and I ended up taking these little things out of the other one right here putting them back in and it lined them all back up perfect again so my son's getting a, <laughs> getting a perfectly good drill doctor that thing sharpened over a thousand bits I would say easy over the years and it's like 15 years old probably it's been around a long time so anyway I updated this last week and so I'm gonna sharpen a couple of these bits and get them ready to drill that out I tried drilling through that uh, back there in that back corner behind that uh, tail light and it was a lot of a lot of force so we're gonna make this a lot easier with this all right about 20 seconds later I got two sharp bits 
and that thing makes it idiot proof i mean it's it's just it does a perfect job and uh these things will cut a lot better let's go back to working on this thing all right there's two lot cables 25 foot long it's all wrapped and going in there now um when we were putting phone cables in and big stuff sometimes we would start in the middle just so we weren't dragging the whole thing um every which way and uh i'm gonna go ahead and do that with this one i'm probably gonna start back in here and pull it back that way or maybe right here i'll start right here and come in through the this part and then i'm going to come up about right through in there and stick that piece up and then we'll put it in there and then i'll have the breaker uh, post that will go on here and the ground that will go over here on this one as well so um it's nice having those two uh there so we'll get that Add it in here in a little bit and we'll run this cable. I'm going to run this underneath down along the, the uh, frame in there and just use the existing holes with the tie wraps. Uh, they're probably pretty common for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done. All right, now that I've got that reamed out with two or three phases of bits, I'm going to put that little stepper bit in there and uh, put a hole in there. I think that will allow me enough room to get all that through there and probably file it out just a little bit smooth it up and uh, see if we can get that to where it'll it'll make a nice round fitting for that tubing all right she's in there and there's the wire we've got about three and a half feet of extra wire on this end but i'll loop it up i probably won't cut it i'll just kind of loop it back there but uh here's the install there's that. My cable ties going on. With the wrap all the way around it. I'll probably go back and uh, shoot a couple more anchors in there. Uh, that steel frame is pretty hard to shoot through, but uh, wherever I can get a, a cable tie through, I'll probably shoot another cable tie through it. And uh, with the anchors. So anyway. So there it is, all the way down through there. And up underneath in here. There it is, running along back in there. It runs along the I beam. Tried to attach it, you know, quite often. Um, I did drill a couple tap screws into the frame. And here we are in the back side view there's Macaulay girl looking at me yeah and this is where it's coming in underneath uh, back in here coming up and sliding down through there don't want to put anything over the fuses or anything so I have you know 12 inches of slack 13 inches of slack or so so I'll put them in there and put the breaker on here and uh, probably put a little bus breaker with that little breaker bar right in here. Anyway, if you think that's an easy feat for a 65 year old, mm -hmm. laying on your back, doing all that, not quite so much fun. But uh, hey, we're working at it and seeing how she's coming. On the other forward, I run right up in here in those little slots there. We'll put her on the frame and see how she does. And I'll check it every, time, every now and then just to see where it's at. Make sure that it's not uh, dangling down. But anyway, so that, that hole was probably the hardest part just to get in through there. And uh, these are these Anderson connectors. I probably will wire that up directly to the post. Leave my Anderson connector out here so I can tie my... Um, winch into it so one of my battery cables for it so we'll see how that, all that goes and have some fun with that all right back ends it's installed um i just put in the three screws at the top the bottom is resting on that the rubber jacket and uh it just doesn't move anywhere so 
that's a hard mount down and I tried putting a couple screws in the very bottom of it, but uh, it had to change to a different screw type and then want to put different threads on different screws on there. So those three will put it in there, the two to slide in and the one in the center locks it in place. And I had very something very similar to the other one. It just and it was a uh, bed liner that slid in and it mounted that and never gave me any troubles. Uh, I've got the Anderson and everything wired into the back back there with the cables coming in and so that's pretty well ready to go. I can plug cables in from right here. I can turn this on front on from right here off the back of the tailgate with the tailgate open and get my cords in there. So I mean I've learned that from previous years that uh, that's that's the way to go. Of course we've got the thing cable installed. I've got slack laying up here for uh, this. I've got a breaker that I'm going to put in here. I think I'm just going to run a, a bus bar off the top of one of these and pick that up um, in there. So that'll give me a, a a switch that'll set about right here in here in this area. Then I'll pull in from these here. Then I'll I'll probably cut this down a little bit just to get some of the slack out of here. But uh, I don't want it. Uh, I don't want it covering up the fuse boxes or anything up there. And I'll hit the other side to the to the uh, ground over here, and we should be good to go with all of the attachments, and it'll be ready to roll. And I think I'm good on my slot down in there. I had a lot of room down through in that that area, so that should good be good. And I'm gonna leave that tied up there until I do that. I'll probably go ahead and put the ground, uh, tie the ground in, and we've got the jacket back here in just a minute, and get that mounted up to here. So. There we go. Lots of fun. That's the 7.3 Godzilla engine. You saw it here first. I guess it's the first time I've opened up the hood. And uh, it's always fun. You know, plenty of stuff. Looks like that's probably my. Looks like that's probably my. Topper light coming in. So there we go. All right, it's hooked up. I uh, basically have a, on order one of these right here with the breaker in it. Uh, this is a 12 volt uh, breaker to protects the the battery from the wiring and the inverter back there in case it would go over i have it at 100 amp it'll run most about anything i want to run on it but i'll uh, go ahead and put a 250 amper on there because that'll be about maxed out for what the the inverter would be able to pull off the battery and of course it ain't gonna pull it very long but uh, anyway uh, this truck has the bigger uh, alternator on it like 150 amper or something like that I don't know, 165 amp i'm not real sure I don't quote me on that but anyway i've got to get a metric uh no, it's about the size of a quarter inch, but it's not quite. It's a different thread. So I'd have to go get a couple threads off of it and uh, a nut off of it and uh, replace that. But other than that, it's ready to go. I have it tie wrapped here. And I picked up a few other things to uh, go along the frame again and to tie it off. The uh, couple things I found at Menards that probably will work is... Uh, these are a, a cable tie with a hole in it, and you can take the and run your little tap screw through that, and then pull it up tight so you can hang off of that. And it's it's a, a heavy duty service, so right in there, probably about a 50 pound or so. I'm not sure exactly what the rating is on it, but anyway, there's that. I also got some clips in case I need to run some metal clips in there. The weight of that wire is a little heavier than that, that number six that I had run before. And uh, I had got a piece of pipe to make me a bus bar, but I hadn't. I decided not to use it. 
and uh, go ahead and these are the best uh, connectors for, for inverters um, they're a whole lot more configurable they're heavy duty they don't give out they don't corrode um, and you can tighten them up after you get done you tighten them up you tighten them up and uh, they're good and they fit right on there so the, this is for uh, 8 to 2 gauge and I have 2 gauge on on this so I'll use about 6 of these on my install and um, anyway so it's installed the uh, I've got a fan in the back of the truck and it's all hooked up I fired the fan up And we'll just turn it on. And there's the fire, there's the fan. And you can't really see the light down there, but it's basically going to tap it blows the way. just sitting there running on the on that this uh, inverter has a low voltage deal that it'll kick out just before it drains the battery totally so uh, but yeah and then there's the breaker that turns it all off so I uh, kind of like how that did it I just mounted it to the mounting post so if I do need to work it I just take this one post off and this is all swing up out of the way and the uh, so if you're having to change the battery out it won't be too too much pain to get it out there and there you go that's it we're ready to plug this thing back in and get her going <laughs> 